Mike Bond of MMA Junkie here in Toronto ahead of UFC 231 where I'm joined once again by Paul Felder, the second consecutive pay-per-view. We're uh, talking, Paul. We're uh, getting a nice spawn here. Yeah, yeah, it's been good, man. Uh, Toronto is cold. We are here, but uh, this pay-per-view is stacked and uh, I, I think we're going to see some amazing fights on Saturday night. Yeah, and official wins wrapped up this morning. Nothing of note, to, which is good. good news. Yeah, no news is kind of good news in that sense. I mean, Hanato Moicano did miss weight as the alternate, but fortunately his services I don't think will be needed. Max Holloway, Brian Ortega on point. Uh, just very good to have this fight official now, and you know, Max Holloway can kind of put those troubles behind. Um, is that just kind of the big narrative for you coming into this fight? All the concerns are kind of alleviated, now we can focus on the fight? Yeah, I think there was a lot of people kind of doubting Max and after his last year and all the kind of ups and downs that he's been through wondering where's his body at where's his mind at is he going to be able to make weight and I was down in the workout rooms with him and he still seemed he gave me a couple winks he's in good spirits and uh making waves on you know even under he was what 140 uh, 44.5 so that's good I think he tried to prove a point saying you know this is still my division if I want to be here at featherweight and making weight was a big statement and he's got a big challenge in Brian Ortega but I don't know we'll see everybody kind of like Max has said everybody's always said this guy's the guy that's going to take me out well it's 12 in a row now and that'll be what 13 that have said that and haven't done it if Max can get through Ortega on Saturday. Yeah, and I mean, these two guys are 100%. Once I saw Max working out at the open workouts, all my concerns kind of went away because he, you know, was throwing spinning kicks, flying knees. Yeah. Like, he looked like Max Holloway, you know, far cry from what he was when he was in uh, Las Vegas for 226 when he could barely even get his hands up. But on paper, this fight, these two at 100%. Just give me your kind of analysis how you think, you know, each guy needs to approach this in order to win. Well, I, I think Max has got to use his footwork, keep it on the feet. He's got great kicks, great punches, and he switches stances really well, which is hard to time a takedown when somebody's constantly going southpaw and orthodox, and Max has lateral movement. He moves around. He has good takedown defense now. You know, early in his career, he was getting taken down. He kind of fixed that problem. So I really don't see... Ortega being able to take him down with his wrestling necessarily, but we've seen Ortega with power in his hands. You saw him drop Frank Yeager. I think that's a position that we could maybe see the fight end up on the ground, but Ortega's always improving his stand-up. His boxing has always looked crisp. That's something he really sets out to, to have a focus on. So I think for Max, definitely use his movement, keep it at range, combinations, putting punches and bunches, which is what he does best. If you look at the stats, the amount of volume that Max put out in his fights versus what Ortega puts out. I mean, it's it's not even close. Max crushes him in that department. But we've seen Ortega get beat up, lose rounds, and in the third round, come back and steal a finish. So he's one of those guys you can never count him out. I don't care if it's 30 seconds left in the fifth round. Ortega can still find a way to win that fight. If he's not able to take Max down, can he win this fight? Look, it's MMA. I can sit here and say that, yes, if I look at the papers and I look at the stats and I look at their fight history, more likely than not, I think if it stays on the feet, it's going to be Max's fight. But this is MMA, man. We don't know what's going to happen. Ortega can catch him with a crazy uppercut, a head kick that we didn't even know he was working on. And oh, that's what we'll be talking about for the next year. But I think if I had to say, you know, who's going to win if it stays on the feet for a five round fight, I'm going to have to lean towards. Holloway. And then the co-main event, you know, even more uh, great fighting there. Yeah. We have uh, Valentina Shevchenko, Ioanni, and Jacek. Just an amazing fight f between those two. Um, it's an interesting concept because we have Valentina who's fought for the title at 135. Ioanni was the champion at 115. How does that, just the size and those kind of aspects, play into this fight? In this case, I don't think that's necessarily going to be a huge issue because they're kind of meeting in the middle, you know, um, and Valentina wasn't really cutting weight to make 135, so she was kind of eating, staying healthy to be even able to perform at that weight class. So this is absolutely her natural weight class, and I don't even think this is necessarily a stressful cut for her to make 125 pounds. And obviously for Joanna, this is just comfortable. She's coming in here, she's eating, she's she's working out, she's got energy. So I think we're going to see the best of both of these ladies, and for the fourth time, really. I mean, they met as amateurs in kickboxing and. 
you know, the, the ties are towards uh, Valentina, so Joanna's she's due for a win in this matchup here. Joanna needs to get off to a strong start, in my opinion. I mean, Valentina, I think, has gotten to a defensive shell sometimes. She kind of gives away rounds, looking to counter strike and stuff. Is that kind of what you think is an important element for Joanna to win this fight? Yeah, and I think she's got to... Uh, Put the pressure and, and, and stay on Valentina. And one of the things Mike Brown, her coach, is always talking about is that you, you can't, he's always telling her, engage your muscles. It's one of the things we were talking about in the fighter meetings. And what he means by that is don't don't relax. You're kind of almost throwing things with half effort or you, you kind of sit back and, and you're almost too loose in there. He wants her to be more aggressive, hitting harder because she's got the cardio. That's all they kept harping on in the whole meetings is that this this woman can go for 10, 15 rounds if she wanted to. And she's going to need to do that. And for Valentina, I think she's going to have to mix in, make it a full MMA fight. Don't just, even if she is the better striker, I think her chances to win are greatly going to be sided on if she uses takedowns. Even if she doesn't keep Joe Jacek down there, use it, get on top, wear her out, put that pressure on her. And uh, I think that's the keys for for Valentina versus Joanna. For Joanna, I think it's definitely keep it on the feet, use her distance, but distance and moving forward too. Use that jab, she's got a snappy jab, good straight punches, so that, that, that is definitely the fight that I think is exciting most fans out there. I mean, to see what's gonna happen in the fourth time these, these ladies meet, it's, it's an interesting matchup. Yeah, and Joanna said this week that she feels if she wins this fight, she's the goat of female fighting. She's the best you know, female fighter uh, in history. If Amanda Nunes wins later this month, she might ha take she issue might with that, there, but yeah. at least for these couple weeks. Uh, would you agree with that? If Joanna does win this fight, does she kind of stand alone in terms of her legacy? Yeah, if she can win a belt at 125 pounds and she was the reigning champion at 115, I think it would be hard to to argue with that. I think you have to have a certain amount of title defenses and she's had a lot. Um, she's had a couple setbacks against Rose, but other than that, I mean, we were saying that she's the greatest thing since sliced bread when she was dominating. You get a couple losses and people are suddenly like, oh, you're not that great. It's like, it's crazy in this sport. You, you, you slip up a couple of times and you know she obviously got caught and, and finished in the first one but the, f the second one was a close five round fight so uh, and you could argue she won that yeah a lot and a lot of people do i mean i won't get into that and who i think won or any of that but yeah people are quick to dismiss you just coming off of a loss so i think if she wins that belt and i'm curious to see if she wants to defend it she's mentioned going back down to 115 pounds so she's maybe she wants to be one of those people that can uh, hold and defend. We haven't seen it yet where somebody can continuously defend two belts, but maybe she'll be the first. She's crazy enough, I think. A deep card overall, lots of interesting fights. Uh, six people who have headlined UFC cards just within the past couple years fighting on the undercard here. Any matchup, any one fighter that really has your interest that you want to see perform or just see how they they fare on Saturday night? Dawadu, am I saying his name right? Yeah, Hakeem Dawadu. Dawad, God, I'm going to say that name wrong. Close enough. Sorry, guys. Uh, and Bakniak and, and those two are fired up to get in there and put on a show and they've both talked about how they have better stand-up skills than their other um, fighter and we've seen Bakniak in absolute wars his fight with Zabit he's shown nothing but grit he's a Boston guy he's you know working class type guy so I'm, I'm interested to see how that fight plays out at, at featherweight for sure yeah is that your fight of the night pick early it could be yeah for sure both those guys are going to stand and, and trade and punch each other in the face a lot so it could be an exciting matchup yeah well lots of those lots of potential on this card it's very deep 13 fights scheduled for Saturday everyone made weight uh, Paul I really appreciate you taking the time to preview the event with me and we will see you guys Saturday night all the coverage you need on MMAJunkie.com.